I'm going to show you guys step by step how to screen print CMYK with the white base on the auto. Coming up. Welcome back. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe. Let's go ahead and dive right into this tutorial. So the first thing I'm going to do, I have some fresh screens ready to go. I'm using 305 mesh along with 195 for the white base. And I'm going to go ahead and coat my screens with some TZ Emulsion. The screens that I'm using for the white base, I use Ulano Orange. So that way it does build up a little bit thicker of an emulsion gasket, so to speak. So that way I can put a little bit more of a deposit down. So what I'm going to do is use the sharp edge of my scoop coater to coat my screens one and one. With CMYK printing, you want to make sure that your screens have a nice, smooth, even surface once you coat your screens. Now that we've coated our screens, I'm going to go ahead and put the emulsion back in the bucket and wash out our scoop coater. While these screens are drying, let's go ahead and do our separations. Okay, so here is the artwork that we are going to print with the white underbase. It is on a transparent background. Initially, you do want to open your image in RGB. What we are going to do is we're going to go to edit and then we're going to go to color settings. And I may have this loaded up already, but I'll show you the sequence of how you go about loading things up. And because we are using Wilflex's inks, I'm going to go over to my CMYK color profiles and you can download this if you are using Wilflex's process inks. And I'm just going to open that up and I'm going to hit OK. Now that we have our color profile loaded, we are going to change this to CMYK color. And what will happen is it will apply the... So you're basically going from RGB to CMYK, right? And with this color profile, it will make its changes that way that this image prints appropriately. But I like to take it a step even further. I'm going to hit Command M on the keyboard. And I'm going to just pull this back just a little bit because I know it will gain on press a little bit as we do start to print some of these colors wet on wet. I'm going to hit undo and you can see how it lightened up. I'm going to hit undo and redo. And you can see how it lightened it up just a little bit. And that is just to kind of compensate for gain on press. So I'm going to go ahead and and save this out as a TIFF. And we'll just save it to our desktop for demonstration's sake. I'm gonna remove the layers, make sure that I embed my color profile, Will Flex Process 305. We're using 305 mesh screens. So we're going to go ahead and save that. And we are going to save our transparency and we're going to hit OK. So the next step, next thing we need to do is create our white base, right? So I'm gonna hold down the command key or if you're on a PC use control and then click over the little icon here and that will bring up our selection for our white base and then I'm just going to hit command shift N to make a new layer and hit D on the keyboard to bring my default colors back here so we're wanting to use this black I'm going to hit option and then delete and then that will give us our white base to work with. Just real quickly off screen, what I did is I, because this did have a drop shadow, what I did was I made a clipping path and then I removed the drop shadow. Otherwise that would have printed out as white. So now what we have to make sure is that this image is in grayscale and we can use our levels by hitting Command L and making sure that this is 100% black and hitting OK and then we just want to save this as a TIFF and I went ahead and saved this as a white base TIFF including our gray gamma profile so we're just going to hit save I'll just save over that and uh, so I'm just trying to save a couple extra steps to keep you guys from 
watching me do a clipping path, I'm sure you guys could probably figure out how to remove a drop shadow on your own. However, that's about how you go about making your, your white base. So let's go to our t-shirt registration template. And by the way, guys, if you're interested in getting this t-shirt regi registration template, I'll leave a link down in the description where you can find that. So now we're going to bring our art in onto our art layer. I'm going to hit Command Shift P and I'm going to go over to my uh, desktop here. I'm going to bring in both my white base and my CMYK image that we are going to print. I'm going to hit OK and I'm just going to click on the artboard and bring both of those in. I'm going to select both of those and then just align those to one another because they are the same size image they will align to one another. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to links and we're going to embed the CMYK image and this is how you do that. This little box up here, hit embed images, flatten to a single image. Now we have a flattened image here and the reason we did that is because we want to go over to our attributes and we want to click over print fill. Uh, let me send this to the back real quick. Because this is a grayscale image, we are able to assign that its own spot color. So let's call this white base. And we're going to make it a spot color. And I'm going to give it a little bit of cyan. So that way we can see it. If we didn't have that, cy that cyan in there, you just wouldn't be able to see it. So I like to include a little bit of cyan in there. You can use whatever color you want. Now I'm going to send that to the back. And with this image here selected with overprint fill, when we hit command shift Y or another way to get that, get to that is view and then overprint preview. Now you'll be able to see how our image prints over our white base here. And that will just allow you separation wise to the know that you're you know you're kind of on the money and everything's looking good all right so at this point we're pretty much ready to print and because we do have our CMYK layer or artwork here on top of this white base this will print as when you when we go to do our film and I'll, I'll show you here in a moment so I'm gonna hit command P now if I go to output, we have our white base as our spot color and then our CMYK process. So one of the things I do want to double check is to make sure that my AccuRip is set to 65 LPI. And we're gonna go over here to the settings real quick. And we are at 65 LPI. We're using a round dot at 22.5 uh, angle. So that's all good and we're going to go ahead and, and hit print but one of the things that I do like to do is I like to make sure that I have my information included up here at the top by using the page information here and so that way when my film prints out and I burn my screens I have that information in there and I know what screen I am work, working with basically so let's go ahead and hit print and then we're all set and our film will start coming out Now that our emulsion is nice and dry, it's time to expose some screens. Be sure that when you're putting your film onto your screen, that it is the tacky side down that you can catch with your nail. to do is rinse both sides back and forth so that way the image just starts to fall out and then we'll spray it with the water hose from the print side to blow out all those half tones. Once 
you have your image rinsed out, you don't want to hit on it too much more. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the screen around. And I'm going to give it a little bit of a light touch. Not spraying in my image area, but just kind of round it to get rid of some of that excess emulsion, making sure it doesn't go down into my image. Now that we got one screen exposed and rinsed out, I'm going to go ahead and set it in the sun. And I'm gonna put another one on the exposure unit. By setting them out in the sun, it also post harden them and it will dry them a little quicker. All right, while our screens are drying, let's talk about the inks that we're going to use. What I'm using is Will Flex's process line of inks. So we have our yellow, magenta, cyan, and black. I tend to like to use Will Flex's inks, especially when it comes to the CMYK inks because they're just very creamy, easy to work with. They flow through the mesh really well and they they just have really great results. Also, they have a profile online in which you can you can upload that into Adobe Photoshop and get some pretty great results. And the white ink that I'm using is Will Flex's Epic Amazing Bright White. It's a really creamy white ink, although I'm getting a little low here. We got some on the way, but it's it's very creamy, easy to work with, and it flows through the mesh really well. We always have had great results with Will Flex. If you have yet to try out the Epic Amazing Bright White, give it a try. You won't be disappointed. Will Flex is not a sponsor, nor am I being paid to say this. They just have really great inks and they have worked really well for us. The squeegees that we are going to use is our hard durometer squeegees. You generally want to use either 80 or 90 durometer. I believe ours is a 90 durometer. What a higher durometer basically is, is a harder squeegee. And what that will do is put down as little ink as possible. You don't want to mash too much ink down because you can experience what they call gain on press. And that essentially is if you're trying to print a dot this big, over the course of the run, if you're using a 70 durometer squeegee, your dot will slowly get bigger and bigger, and that's just because you're putting down a ton of ink. In our case, we're doing a couple of the colors wet on wet, so it will start to build up and stack on the back of that screen and just kind of blur out, and you'll just have an ugly mess on your hands, and the image quality will just get worse as the, as the run goes on. So. Use a high durometer squeegee. What we traditionally use is a 70-90. If you do end up using a 70 durometer like this squeegee here, which is pretty flexible, you're going to be depositing that much more ink and you won't get as good of results. With our white, we're going to use our flattening screen. And that's just fancy folk talk for a screen with an unexposed image in it and a piece of Teflon underneath it. And then we're going to use a hard durometer squeegee to really flatten down those fibers so that way we have a nice smooth surface to print on. And what I'm using in this screen is basically just reducer just to lubricate it up a little bit. Be sure to check out our link here. It's either here or here. I forget which side it's on. But we have a tutorial on how to make your own flattening But we have a tutorial on how to make your own flattening screen. Now that our screens are all dry, it's time to tape them up. Cue the time lapse. Now that we have our screens all taped up, let's talk about the print order of CMYK. Ooh, it's hot. Ah, wait. Okay, so we wanna do the white base first. We're gonna put that in head number one, and then followed by that after flashing, we have our, our flattening screen. That's the second thing that's gonna happen. Then we will do our yellow, our magenta, our cyan, and our black. In between the yellow and the magenta, we're going to flash that yellow and magenta and then print the cyan and black wet on wet. So we're doing yellow and magenta. <laughs> so we're doing yellow and magenta, both wet on wet, and then cyan and black, those two wet on wet. We'll show you how that works out. Now it's time to set up our screens. Let's go ahead and do this.
while you're loading ink up into your screen, you want to be sure not to mash any of your ink into your image area, otherwise you'll get a false printout from the get-go and it'll take you a few passes to be able to clear that. So I'm just going to place some ink right behind my image area, pull up here at the top. I'm going to flood this and we're good to do our first test print and register everything off of this. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up a test t-shirt got this little small new t-shirt that I'm going to use. Now we're going to hit this a couple times over at station number six. All right, so we got our first little test print of black going down. We have our registration marks. Now we're going to register up the rest of the screens along with these registration marks and do some test prints. For those of you that are new to screen printing, what registering the screens up means is essentially we're gonna take these crosshairs and align each one of them up in each corner, making sure that each color is going to print exactly where we want it to. Now that I have all my stations inked up, squeegees are installed, I went ahead and flooded each station. It's time to run off a test print. I'm going to use clear transfer tape to put it over the black that I printed, and I'm going to go through each station, making sure that the registration is spot on. adjustment. I'm going to pull it more towards the front, move the back that way a little bit, the top that way as well. So I'm just going to unlock my clamps here, look at my registration marks, make my moves. I lock it down, take a test t-shirt, wipe my previous print off. I'm going to hit it again, and we'll see where we're at. Okay, that looks much better. Now we have to repeat this process with the rest of the colors. Let's do this. Look at that. Right on the money, first go round. Same thing with the blue. Or should I say cyan? All right, we're finished doing all of our test registration prints. Now it's time to turn on the flash and we'll actually do some prints. Actually, we got two flashes we need to turn on. All right, at this point, I'm gonna grab me a test t-shirt. Let's toss it on the press and run off some test prints.
right, so here's the results of our first test print. And I just did a second one. You can see we're starting to get a little bit more color. These pictures are supposed to have somewhat of a vintage kind of Polaroid look to it. So I think I'm gonna run off about two more test prints and then see where we're at. Here we are, it's doing a print flash, print flash. That way we're getting a nice bright white. So this is our flattening screen doing its thing. Sorry, the compressor kicked on. And we got our Yellow going down. And here we are with the magenta. And then after the magenta, we got our other flash going to flash those two colors. Onto the cyan. And last but not least, we have our black going down. And this is the second shirt of the two test prints. And we'll see how this turns out. Here's our second of the two. And here is the first. It's starting to look pretty consistent. That's kind of a nice vintage look to it, just like she wanted. And I think the prints are starting to look pretty consistent. Alright, while the press is warming up along with the conveyor dryer, once the pallets are finished warming up, I'm going to tape off the registration mark and we're going to go to production. One of my favorite parts is getting on the stool and taping off registration mark. Actually, I really enjoy getting on this. Come here, you little registration mark. There you are. Okay, registration marks are all taped up. Press is nice and warmed up, and what I mean by that is the pallets are nice and warmed up. Our conveyor dryer is ready to go. It's time for production. You'll notice I have the flash set to practically flash the yellow as well. And you'll see what I'm talking about here. So it's flashing the red. You see how slow it's retracting? And it's actually flashing that yellow as well. Let's take a look again at that one more time. So that way you guys can see. Here we go with the magenta being flashed. And it's still flashing the yellow as well. 
getting two flashes out of one second. Here we go. Here is the finished shirt. Got that cool vintage look to it, just like they wanted. What do you guys think? And just look at how smooth that underbase is by using that flattening screen. And let me show you the difference between, so this is the last print, and then we'll go to the print number one. Let's see, where is it at? There we go. There's print number one. And then here is the last print. It doesn't look like we had much gain going on on press. Look pretty good. Well, I hope you guys learned something. That's it for this tutorial. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment below, so that way it'll help our channel out. And also be sure to check our links down in the description to some of the products that we use in this video. Until next time guys, we'll see you later.